All right, just going to do a video refuting Watchman D's heresies regarding the gifts of the Spirit and how he is basically not wanting to just walk by faith. And a lot of these these heretics who think the gifts of the Spirit are still for us today, um, they don't want us to walk by faith. They want to walk by faith and by sight. And it doesn't come as a surprise because he teaches the uh, Catholic doctrine of devils known as baptismal regeneration. But the gifts of the Spirit were a temporary sign for Israel. The signs that uh, speaking in tongues, and by the way, speaking in tongues were known languages. They're not just this demonic gibberish that the, charis the devil possessed charismatics to. But he uh, is basically, because this is what happens when you don't distinguish between Israel and the church, and he rips a verse out of context from Acts chapter 15, where there are gifts of the Spirit being wrought among the Gentiles, but he doesn't read the full context of what's going on there. But the sign gifts were for the Jews, and I'm going to prove that from Scripture. Because, again, these heretics, they don't want to just walk by faith. They want to walk by faith and by sight, which you know, pretty much proves they're lost a lot of them. But I'm going to show this video by Watchman D. And uh, I'm going to show from the scriptures that he is in error and that the gifts of the Spirit were a temporary sign for Israel. They're not for Gentile Christians. We don't, we don't need the gifts of the Spirit because we have the completed word of God. We have the complete canon of scripture. And we walk by faith, not by sight. But here's a video by Watchman D. Basically pushing this charismatic doctrine of devils, uh, known where the gifts of the spirit, where you just don't want to walk by faith, you want to walk by faith and by sight. Basically, that's what it comes down to. But I'm gonna play this video. Yeah, so I just came across this video today. It was uh, uploaded by Bob. Uh, he asked this man if he could mirror this wicked video to his channel for whatever reason. Basically, all the guy's doing is uh, denying that the gifts of the Spirit are for today. Um, claims he believes in miracles, but somehow the gifts of the Spirit still all that. He's basically giving your basic Baptist cessationist uh, rundown uh, with, you know, very little if any biblical support whatsoever. Well, I got plenty of biblical support to prove that your uh, faking of the gifts of the Spirit are that they're a counterfeit from the devil and that you know because you're you're already a lost heretic by the way you preach baptism and regeneration that proves you're lost because you're putting salvation in the hands of the man and taking it out of jesus christ because that i could go off but for a while but the reason why baptismal regeneration is so wicked and satanic is because basically it rips salvation out of the hand of god and puts it in the hands of a preacher because he can basically determine whether you go to hell or heaven if he wants to baptize you or not it's just Roman Catholicism, it's paganism, that's all it is. Baptismal regeneration is a lie from the devil. But the gifts of the Spirit were a temporary sign for Israel. Okay? Gentile Christians, we don't need signs. We have the completed word of God. We walk by faith, not by sight. But again, I keep reiterating this. These heretics who think the gifts of the Spirit are for us today, they don't want to just walk by faith. It's that simple. And I, I, I'm going to prove in future videos that Satan can counterfeit gifts of the Spirit. And that these gifts of the Spirit that are supposedly being performed today, they're done by the power of Satan. It's that simple. And before you accuse me of blaspheming the Holy Ghost, read Matthew chapter 12, read that verse, and just read it in context. You can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost unless Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. And by the way, it was Jesus Christ doing the gifts of the Spirit, and Jesus Christ says, hey, you're speaking against me, you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Um, you're not Jesus Christ. Okay? It's a big difference. And by the way, in Acts chapter 2, I'm going to show that. Uh, they were doing the gifts of the Spirit, they were mocked, and they, were, they didn't threaten anybody. So, what these charismatic heretics do, I'm not saying Watchman D is a charismatic, but they'll quote Matthew 12 and say, See, if you don't believe my gifts of the Spirit, you are blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Okay, first, like I said, number one, you're not Jesus Christ. And number two, in Acts chapter 2, they were performing the gifts of the Spirit, they were mocked, and they were made fun of, and they didn't threaten those people with blaspheming the Holy Ghost. They just preached the gospel to them. It's that simple. But I could go off about that for a while. But these charismatic Pharisees, because these people who, who try to just make, home in on the gifts of the Spirit, they're Pharisees. These, these people who are just obsessed with the gifts of the Spirit, they have the spirit of a Pharisee because they just do not want to walk by faith. Like Jesus rebuked them for in Matthew 16. Actually, let me just show the scripture because I could go off about this for a while. Uh, these charismatic, you know, or these heretics who think the gifts of the Spirit, because not all of them are charismatics, but these heretics they have the they have the same mentality as the pharisees matthew chapter 16 verse 1 to 4 the pharisees also with the sadducees came and tempting desired of him that they would show them a sign from heaven they're tempting him give us a sign give us a sign and look what jesus says he answered and said unto them 
Uh, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left them and departed. You know, only a wicked and adulterous generation wants a sign. Matthew chapter 12, verse four, uh, 39 to 40. Or 38 to 40. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, referring to him going down to Abraham's bosom and gathering up the Old Testament saints. Okay, an adulterous and sinful generation seeks after a sign. These wicked people who try to make the gifts of the Spirit for Gentile Christians today, they have the spirit of a Pharisee. It's that simple. They do not want to just walk by faith. They want to walk by faith and by sight. But let's get back to the video. So yeah, Watchman D, he's a Pharisee. That plain and simple. Ever. Oh, the gets it's, it's for the Jews, you know. It was for the Jews, is his reasoning. Uh, and so since we don't need, to, need it anymore, so there's therefore no gifts for today. Uh, See, yeah, it was for the Jews. And again, he's going to quote a verse from Acts 15 totally out of context. Uh, let me show you what the scriptures say. And these are some verses that this heretic won't show you. And he is a heretic, by the way. I'm not just saying that lightly. He believes the false gospel. He believes the satanic, luciferian heresy of sinless perfectionism. He believes the Catholic doctrine of devils, of baptismal regeneration, and conditional security. He is a heretic. He's not saved. I wish he would get saved, but he is very prideful, and he's very contentious, too. He's like, debate me, debate me. All right, sorry about that. Just had a bit of an interruption. But, oh uh, yeah, so the gifts of the Spirit were for the Jews. Okay, these heretics, they do not understand the difference between Israel and the church. Let me show you some scriptures on that, that this heretic doesn't understand. And again, he is a heretic. He preaches a false gospel. There's nothing wrong with me calling him a heretic. John chapter 2, verses uh, 18 and 22. I have a couple of scriptures written down there. John chapter 2, verses 18 and 22. The purpose of the gifts were for the Jews. Oh, sorry, I went to John chapter 18. John chapter 2, verses 18 and 22. Uh, then, answered Jesus, then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Let me make sure I'm full screen. Yeah, I am. Wait one sec. Yeah, I'm full screen. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. But notice verse 18. What sign showest thou unto us? And Jesus explained to them the sign. Destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? And he spake at the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. So they had to have a sign to believe the word. What sign? You know, show us thou, and he explains them the sign, the temple of his body. Okay. Um, John chapter 4, verses 46 to 48. You see, this, this belief that the gifts of the Spirit are still around today, it's a very wicked doctrine. It's probably, um, again, it's just the doctrine of the Pharisees. It's, it's probably the most one of the most wicked doctrines because it denies just living by faith. It's that simple. It's very, very wicked. This thing of the gifts of the Spirit are, they have to be before today. John chapter 4, verse 46 to 40, yeah, 46 to 48. Then Jesus came unto the, into Cana of Galilee, where he made water, it made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman who was somewhat sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea, okay, where is Judea? That's where the Jews are into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down to heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Look what Jesus said. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. So the Jews had to see signs and wonders to believe. Uh, John chapter 6, verses 29 to 33. I got the reference right. John chapter 6, verse 29 to 33. Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign 
showest thou then that we may see and believe thee and that what dost thou work our fathers did eat manna in the desert as it is written he gave them bread from heaven to eat who are our fathers it's the jews in the wilderness so that temple is refer- it's, so it's jews in this context then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not bread, not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Okay, so again, you see the Jews are asking for a sign. We need a sign. Signs are for the Jewish people, signs and wonders. They're not for Gentile Christians. We don't need signs. We walk by faith. But again, it's a very wicked doctrine, this thing of the gifts of the Spirit are for Gentile Christians today, because it denies that we just walk by faith. First uh, Corinthians chapter one verse twenty two. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Oh no, I'm sorry. It should have said for the Christians require a sign. No, it's the Jews. They're the ones who require a sign. Okay, it's that simple. The Jews need a sign, not Gentile Christians. We have the complete holy scriptures. Everything we need to know about God is in the in the Word of God. We can just pray. We don't need these these charismatic faking of the of the gifts of the Spirit. Next point, uh, actually, I'll, I'll just keep playing the video just to, because I pretty much made my, made my point. I'll be getting into more, some more scriptures uh, later on, but let's get back to the video of his this wicked video of Watchman D. Watchman Devils, what his name really should be. And I'm not being harsh. I'm sharply rebuking a false prophet. There's nothing scripturally wrong with that. Galatians 1, 8-9 says, Let him be accursed. Romans uh, 16, verses 17-18. Mark and avoid them, and give a strong wording against them. For 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1-3 to has a very strong condemnation against false prophets. It says they, you know, they're, they are, are for their own bellies. They're, you know, they bring in damnable heresies. Watchman D is bringing in damnable heresies. His wicked doctrine of baptismal regeneration, his, his wicked Catholic heresy of conditional security, his Luciferian satanic doctrine of, of sinless perfectionism. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. But let's get r- right back into this. Seems to be his, somewhat his conclusion. Perhaps he might want to straighten me out on that a little bit if I'm mistaken. What we see right here, then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Okay, so we're just gonna sit here and uh, say, "Oh, tongues were for a sign for the Jews." So that's it. Um, why don't you read the context of that verse? You see, these heretics love ripping scripture completely out of context. Let's go to Acts chapter fifteen. Acts fifteen. What was it? Verse twelve. He went to. Yep. Yeah. So it says, and the multitude kept silence and gave audience unto, to Barnabas and Saul, declaring that what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. They're declaring it. Okay, but who are they declaring it to? In Jerusalem. Okay, then certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. So there's Jews among them. They're unbelieving Jews, by the way, as well. Uh, verse 2 When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small uh, dissension and dis- disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and a certain other of them should not should go up into Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Okay. There were gifts wrought among Gentiles, but who were the gifts for? Okay, it's not saying they were for Gentiles. Okay, it just says they were wrought among the Gentiles. It's that simple. But were they for the Gentiles? No, they were not. And again, where is this taking place? The Jerusalem in Judea. Men from Judea are, are present there, unbelieving Jews. Uh, and keep in mind, a lot of the early Christians were former Jews as well, were Jewish, and they left the, Jew, the religion of Judaism. Look at verse 5. But there rose up a certain sect of the Pharisees which which believed, saying, There is there was it there it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Okay? So there are unbelieving there were Jews that they believed, but there were also unbelieving Jews among them as well. Uh, and then it's because you have to understand too, the book of Acts is a transitional book. It's transitioning from the gospel being presented to the Jews to now both Jews and Gentiles. But of course, he's, he's not a dispensational, so he refuses to rightly divide the word of truth. So he's a workman that needs to be ashamed. Uh, there also was another scripture. You know, uh, there was, uh, you know, the Gentiles turned to God. It's that simple. There was, I thought there was another scripture. I, I, I think it was, um, I read the one I was actually thinking of. But basically, um, 
it's saying that or they're wrought among Gentiles, but it wasn't saying they're for Gentiles. So he's ripping that totally out of context to prove his heresy, that the gifts of the Spirit are for Gentile Christians today. But I'm going to go a little bit further into his uh, wicked video to show what else he says. Gifts of the Spirit ceased. Really, we're going to go, we're, we're going to use that kind of a, we're going to use that kind of logic. Oh, anyway, um, what do we got here? So I, of course, invited this guy to a uh, debate. I invited him to a debate. Uh, you might want to read what Romans chapter 1 says about debating. It's a sign of reprobate mind. Okay, Debating is a sin. Plain and simple. Okay, uh, Watchman D is a very contentious person. Is that simple? Let me just show you what the Bible says. Let me search up the word debate and see what comes up. Show you what the word of God says. Because you have Proverbs 25 verse 9, debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover no secret to other. So you have one mention of debate. But then you also have Isaiah chapter 27 verse 8, which also mentions debate with it. But then you have Isaiah chapter 58 verse 4. Behold fast, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do unto this day, to make your voice be heard on high. So you have here debating Isaiah chapter 58 verse 4. Debating is associated with strife and contention. Romans chapter 1 verse 29. Actually, let me go back to Isaiah chapter 58 verse 4 so I can get show the full verse. So it says, Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. You see, Watchman D, he fasts for strife and debate. He's a contentious person. And there's a big difference between contending for the faith and just being overall contentious and argumentative like that. It's a big difference. Romans chapter 1, verse 29. Being filled with, and the context is about people who have rep reprobate, reprobate mind, by the way. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, uh, maliciousness, full of mur full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. So when you have when you're full of debate, you are you basically are displaying the signs of someone who has a reprobate mind. Let's go to First Corinthians, chapter twelve, verse twenty. For I fear lest when I come I shall not find you such as I would, and all that, all uh, that I should be found unto you such as you would, lest. Uh, not lest there be debates, envyings, wrath, strifes, backbitings, whisperings, sm uh, swellings, tumults. Okay, so the Corinthian church are acting very carnal, and what are the things they're doing? Debate, and it's lumped in with envyings, wraths, strifes, backbitings. Debating is contentious. It, it is a form of contention. It is not uh, something that a Christian ought to be doing. Debating is uh, it's not the same thing as contending for the faith. Which shows what the word, word of God says about debates. Yeah, First Corinthians twelve twenty. That was the verse I was thinking of right there. I don't have the best memory, so I have to often write stuff down. But Watchman D is a contentious uh, person. He loves strife. He loves contention. He's like debate me, debate me, debate me. Big difference between contending for the faith and defending the faith and just being argumentative and and full of strife like that. Big difference. But let's get back to his uh, wicked video and show a few more scriptures after we get done with this. Let's look at it. Let's look. Let's see what happened. The suspense. So Bob says, Aaron, can I download this mirror to my channel? I'll put links, etc. Aaron said, sure. And asked him, what's your position on deliverance? Yeah, well, the Lord Jesus Christ came to deliver us, you know, to set the captives free, set us at liberty. Yeah, yeah he did that to uh, the people in Abraham's bosom. He led captivity captive in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8 to 10. Not, not the same thing as what he's referring to, though. See, right? This guy's going to take the word deliverance, and he's applying it a certain way and saying he doesn't believe in it, but whatever. Give him a chance to clear that up if he wants to come on. Uh, see, you got the really contention. Come on, debate me. Come on. Let's see you debate. See, he's he just full of contention. It's that simple. Big, again, big difference between debating and being contentious and contending for the faith. Big difference there. Take issue with is this guy started uh, saying in this video, and I'll put a link to it in the description, saying in this video that you could be out of fellowship with God and yet still be saved. Where have I heard this before? Uh, free grace? Faith alone? Eternal security? Yeah, because Watchman D is self-righteous. Okay, he's not trusting in Jesus Christ. He's trusting in his pagan water baptism to try to cleanse him from his sins. He's a self-righteous person. Okay, 
when you're out of fellowship with God, it means you're in sin. And again, when I had my discussion with Watchman D, he was really trying to water down the chastening of the Lord upon sinning Christians. Because again, he has not experienced the new birth. He has not experienced spiritual regeneration. Why? Because he's still a lost hell on a sinner. He's still lost and dead in trespasses and sins. He's not been born again. He's, he, doesn't, he doesn't know what the new birth is because he's never experienced it. He's still, again, he's still a lost hell on a sinner. So he's trying to, he doesn't understand the chastening of the Lord. See, all these conditional security devils, these, these um, work salvation, work, works righteous heretics, they have no knowledge of the new birth and spiritual regeneration. And you got heretics like Jack Smack 7 7, these antinomian heretics who will accuse people like me of being lordship salvation and, oh, you're preaching lordship salvation. Because I say that the Holy Ghost comes in and regenerates you and makes you a new creature and gets sin out of your life. Okay? Lordship salvation. Okay, just to make a distinction for these uh, wicked heretics like Jack Smack 7 7. If I was Lordship Salvation, I'd be like Watchman D and saying you have to clean yourself, you clean your life up, and then you basically merit salvation that way. Okay? Um, the changed life after salvation is not Lordship Salvation. But I got accused that, oh, you're preaching Lordship Salvation. No, the Holy Ghost comes in and changes you. Let me show you a good scripture on that. Um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. A good verse on spiritual regeneration after salvation. You don't clean yourself up to be saved. You can't. You can't stop sinning to be saved. That is a heresy. That's work salvation. That's uh, that is uh, Roman Catholicism. That's all it is. It's it's pap It's just papist doctrine. But the Holy Ghost comes in and cleans your life up. You don't save yourself. It's God who saved you. That's the whole thing. Understanding eternal security is understanding that it's God who saved you. You don't save yourself. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away your sins. That is in Acts chapter 13, verses 38 to 39, Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 to 14, Titus chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, and 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. The blood of Jesus Christ washes away all your sins, not water baptism. Okay, That is a pagan heresy. The, the, the heresy that water baptism washes away your sins, that is paganism. It comes from, from pagan religions and Roman Catholicism. But 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. Here's a good scripture on spiritual regeneration after salvation. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. Now, ceasing from sin is not referring to being sinlessly perfect. It, it, totally twisting. If you're thinking that's referring to being sinlessly perfect, it's not at all what it's saying. Like how they ripped John 8, 11 out of context when Jesus says, go and sin no more. Yeah, read the context of John chapter 8, verse 11. He's telling her to stop committing adultery. He's not telling her to be sinlessly perfect. Which, you know, I, I could go off about that for a while. But verse 2, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, revilings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think it is strange that you run not with them uh, to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you, who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Okay? When you, when you have that spiritual regeneration, people, your old friends are going to think weird of you. Like again, like it says in verse 4, they think it's strange that you run not with them. They're going to look at you and say, what happened to you? You're, you're different. Because you're not going along with their excess of wine, uh, lust, revilings, banquetings, idolatry. Okay? When you have a changed life, you're going to, you know, you're not going to fit in with the lost world. Okay? But again, these self-righteous papists like Watchman D, they're trying to sanctify themselves. They're trying to justify themselves. Like Romans chapter 10, verse 3, like Romans 10, 3 says, they're trying to establish their own righteousness, righteousness rather than submit to the righteousness of God. They are lost. It's that simple. And I pray he does get saved. I really do. But he's not a saved man. He is trusting in his self-righteousness to save him. And he's believing the doctrine of devils that the gifts of the Spirit are for today, and he doesn't want to just walk by faith. He believes the satanic Catholic heresy that uh, you can lose your salvation, that the Luciferian heresy you can be sinlessly perfect, and the pagan pagan heresy that you can that baptism washes away your sins, not the blood of Jesus Christ. Because you look at these heretics, they put more emphasis on baptism than they do on the blood of Jesus Christ. They're lost. They don't understand the gospel. Okay, so Mark and Avoy Watchman D, and yes, the gifts of the Spirit are for the Jews. Let me show you just a few more scriptures to back up my point before I close this video. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 8. Here's a really powerful scripture proving that. These twelve Jesus set forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What's the kingdom of heaven? The physical earthly kingdom. Uh, verse 6, heal the sick, cleanse the leopards, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Okay, who are they performing the gifts of the spirit for? And the audience of the gifts of the spirit, who is it for? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's for the Jews, plain and simple. And the gifts of the spirit could be performed by the apostles. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. The signs of the apostle were wrought among you. Uh, one more scripture is that the gifts of tongues fulfilled a prophecy for the Jews. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm going to close this video off because it's getting long enough. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. Last scripture I'm going to cover. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they not hear me say to the Lord. Wherefore tongues are for a sign not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesy saveth not them, not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Okay, they're a sign for them which believe not, the Jews. But look at verse 21. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues. Okay, when it says it is written, it's referring to an Old Testament scripture. Okay, what is that Old Testament scripture? It is Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 to 12. That's the prophecy that tongues were fulfilling. And who is that prophecy for? The Jews. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 to 12. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Who is this prophecy for? The Jews. Who were tongues for? The Jews. Plain and simple. Not for Gentile Christians. Go not in the way of the Gentiles, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, Jesus said. And do these gifts of the Spirit in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 8. So Mark and Avoy Watchman D, he is a lost heretic. I pray he gets saved. I really do want to see him get saved. But he's not saved. And the path down the path he's going down, you know, continuing to preach a false gospel, he is a curse for preaching a false gospel. Galatians 1, 8 through 9. So don't be deceived by him, and don't be deceived by these charismatic heretics who try to save the gifts of the Spirit for Gentile Christians today. They're not. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.